All right, what's going on, guys? If there's one thing that makes From Software genius, it's the way they pack their games full of tiny details, all of which are crafted with purpose. Everything has a meaning. And the base game of Elden Ring was one of the best examples of that in their entire catalog. The lore hunting in this game is still alive and well, and we can rest well assured that the DLC is going to be equal, packed full of interesting stories, and we're already getting a glimpse of that. So today we're going to take a look at one aspect of it, and that of course is the main focal point of the trailer in the marketing, Mesmer the Impaler, who we now have a little bit of concrete information about, but whose existence causes us to question many things we thought we knew about the base game. And today we're going to get to the bottom of it. So as we begin today, if you want to stay up to date on all things Elden Ring DLC and enjoy the lore and discussion, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And now let's begin. To start off this discussion, let's go over the little things we do know for a fact. According to recent interviews with Miyazaki, it is confirmed that Mesmer is a demigod, represented by his throne matching with the court of the Erdtree, and that he stands on equal footing with the other demigods. Now these thrones have always been a big point of speculation because of their disorderly layout and varying sizes, and we now know that Mesmer possessed one of them, but has subsequently been erased from the Erdtree's history. And the reason for that is something we're going to learn in the DLC, however, However, Mesmer's appearance does give off hints of why this may have been. Mesmer is entirely decorated in motifs of images that go against the Erd Tree, such as snakes, dragons, and fire. He has the eyes of one who's partook in dragon communion, red hair, and a closed left eye. But despite his seemingly opposition to the Erd Tree, he does appear to hold Merica in somewhat high regard, addressing her in a somewhat regal manner, and having a statue of her holding a child in his throne room. Mesmer's nickname is the Impaler, and we see see that his weapon of choice is a spear, one that he sets ablaze in fire and is able to summon more through its magic. And the final thing we know about him is his sigil, which appears to be a nail with a snake wrapping around it, accompanied by a symbol of fire, which looks like something in between the dragon fire sigil and the frenzied flame sigil, but is not a match to either. And then to the right of the nail we have a symbol of a braid, reminiscent of the hair of Mikola and Merica and others of the golden lineage. But one other point of note you may not have noticed is that Mesmer's snake is no ordinary snake. Snake. This snake has a head on each end and strange wings along its body. And if we look really closely, we can also see that the snake is growing through Mesmer's body, attached on his chest. And we really don't see anything else like it in the base game. But in addition to his blasphemous appearance, he does appear to have some disdain for the tarnish, notably when he says, Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. The new grace of Mesmer's flame. So now that we understand the concrete information we have about Mesmer, it's time to get into the weeds of speculation and dive into what we know about the most prominent symbol of Mesmer, the snake. According to the description of the Duelist set, the snake is viewed as a traitor to the Erd Tree, and the audience of the Colosseum delighted seeing these bronze effigies beaten and battered. So that tells us a few important things. Firstly, the Colosseum tradition dates back to the Age of Godfrey, long before Rikard gave himself to the Great Serpent. So this means that his blasphemy is not the reason the snake is seen as a traitor, but something else is. All throughout Volcano Manor, we see the imagery of snakes, whether it be statues of snakes with wings, which should ring a bell after talking about Mesmer, or the worship of the great serpent Egle's shed skin. There's a lot to unpack here. We can reasonably assume that Egle has been around for a long time, of course preceding Rikard, as told by the serpent god's curved sword, which has a description that reads, curved sword fashioned in the image of an ancient serpent deity, and tool of a forgotten religion practiced on Mount Gelmir. But the problem is we have no links between Egle and treachery against the Erd Tree aside from Rikard. But we do have some other examples, such as the depraved perfumers. These traitors of Landell adorned themselves with the image of two red snakes. The perfumers were once chemists of the capital, devising medicines and creating concoctions that could help its citizens. But their skills were also suitable for war, and the perfumes were employed in the original siege of Landell used against the armies of Godfroy. However, after the shattering, when the demigods rose up against each other, many of these perfumers turned against Landell, vowing a curse upon the Erd Tree and donning the symbol of the Red Snake. So much like Rikard, we have a situation here of a snake meaning blasphemy. But once again, this did not occur until way after the snake was already recognized as that treachery. We have to go even further back. 
The history of Landell is hard to discern. It's the convergence of many wars in history, a side littered with the remnants of struggles for power, and that history has been covered up and overwritten many times. But one point of evidence of a great calamity in this city is all the ash we can find throughout. Nearly every crevice of Landell contains built up ash, with significant buildup even in the highest points of the city. And in order for this to happen, something had to burn. Now, Landell, of course, is the site of a war against the dragons, and a dragon's primary weapon is fire. So a natural conclusion that one would come to is that all the ash around Landell is due to an attack from the dragons. However, we're missing one very crucial piece of that being the case. The buildings themselves are not burned, and they're missing any signs of scorching that should be present if fire swept through the city. But when we finally burn the Erd Tree and go back to Landell, the city is completely subsumed in ash, the same kind of ash we found beforehand. And without evidence of fire overtaking the buildings, again, like before. So looking back at this ash in Landell, a reasonable conclusion here is that the ash fell from above. A really interesting theory popularized by tarnished archaeologists suggests that the Erd Tree was burned before, and when we burn it at the end of the game, that's actually the second time it's happened, and there is a lot of evidence for that. Firstly, the fact that burning the Erd Tree is considered a cardinal sin would suggest a little bit that it has happened before. We also see that the image of a burning tree, such as on the Candle Tree Shield, is outlawed in the lands between. And I do find it funny that we see this symbol in the DLC trailer. And for even further evidence, we can head back to Volcano Manor, a place decorated in blasphemy. One of the paintings we see hanging on the wall is of the Erd Tree, but upon closer inspection, we can see that it's actually of the Erd Tree on fire. Now, is this just an artist interpretation of an idea, or is it a historical event? In order for the snake to be a traitor to the Erd Tree, it suggests that it at one point had to be aligned, and it has been heavily implied that Mesmer once held a throne in the Erd Tree court. Let's consider the idea that Mesmer was the original traitor, the reason that the snake is now seen in that regard. He has the qualities of a dragon, wields a fire similar in color to Giant's Flame, with that same black hue as required by Destined Death to fully burn the tree, and is of course represented by the snake. If he truly did it, it would explain why he was cast out and erased from history. It would explain why the snake is seen as a traitor and the burning of the Erd Tree a cardinal sin. It would explain the decorations in Volcano Manor with the winged snakes, meaning that Rykard holds Mesmer's blasphemy in high regard, even sees it as his own inspiration. It may also explain why so many architectural motifs we see in Volcano Manor are similar to ones we see in the DLC trailer, specifically the winding columns. It could even be so far as the reason the fire monks dress in red, such as the black flame monks donning the color of the godskins. The point here is that Mesmer's existence and his potential treachery against the Erd Tree could fill a big hole that's been present in the lore for a long time, but ultimately we'll have to wait and see if it's true. For now, it's just a theory. Let's talk for a minute about other ways Mesmer could have made an appearance in the lore prior to his announcement. One of the biggest questions I had about the cutscene leading into the boss fight with Radagon pertains to the spear we see piercing Merica's side. It's red and black as of the colors of Destined Death, and for such a striking image that it creates, we seemingly have no explanation for it aside from potentially the Elden Beast, who happens to have a grab attack that does the exact same thing, but instead with golden spears. And I always found this very interesting, because the connotation here is that the Elden Beast used a piece of Destined Death to stab her through where her womb should be, so that she can't give birth to any more demigods. And that does make sense to a degree, but now we have Mesmer who's characterized by black and red, cloaked in all symbols of blasphemy, and given the nickname the Impaler. He seems like a pretty good candidate to me to impale the god within the Erd Tree. Maybe that could even be why he burned it, in order to gain access to her. After all, that's exactly what we do. But we don't have a whole lot of evidence to go off for that one, so I hesitate to jump to a conclusion there. Another noteworthy thing that's come to light since the DLC trailer dropped is the existence of catacombs in the Weeping Peninsula known as the Impaler's Catacombs, though there's not a whole lot to go off here. The dungeon itself is very boring, with almost nothing interesting in it at all except for a trap that quite literally impales the player, which in all likelihood is where the dungeon gets its name, but it's fun to think that it may be a reference to Mesmer all this time. Now the final thing I want to talk about today is actually butterflies. In Elden Ring, there are three kinds of butterflies, nascent butterflies, aeonian butterflies, and smoldering butterflies. 
and a popular theory has gone around for a long time, suggesting that each of these butterflies corresponds to a child of Merica and Radagon, with Aeonian butterflies representing Melania, Nation butterflies representing Mikola or Saint Trina, and the Smoldering butterflies corresponding to an unknown third. Now this has been a big piece of evidence including one that I've used to create the point that Melina may be a child of Merica and Radagon, given that her role in the lore is as the Kindling Maiden, and her association with fire makes a lot of sense in conjunction with the Smoldering Butterfly. But every argument we can make for Melina now can also fit with Mesmer. He has a link to fire, his name starts with M, and he has red hair like the other children. It certainly could make a lot of sense. But again, I hesitate to draw a conclusion there. But what do you guys think about Mesmer? What do you think his story is going to be? There's certainly a lot of ways it can go and a lot of links we can find in the current game that could potentially tie into him, but that exact mystery we discussed is what's going to be revealed in the DLC. So for now, these are just speculation. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. And with all that, I will catch you in the next one.